Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> to most school teachers, early rising becomes a habit. But not to Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High Summer School. No, I've always been cautious about anything that's habit-forming especially getting up before 7 a.m. That's why Mrs. Davis, my landlady, had a particularly tough time waking me last Friday morning. Connie, get up, Connie. It's 6.30. <sighs> Come on now, get up. Now, Connie, you can't be that sound asleep. You've got one eye open. That's just to see if the other one's tightly shut. <laughs> oh, I'll see you later, Mrs. Davis. You'll see me right now. Come on, Connie. You'll feel better after a nice breakfast. Now hurry and get dressed. I've got a surprise for you. Not one of your brand new recipes, Mrs. Davis. Not exactly, Connie. I'm doing something to the eggs that's never been done before. <laughs> Is it legal? <laughs> I'm grilling them, Connie. Good for you, Mrs. Davis. And if they don't come clean, throw them in solitary. <laughs> Well, how do you like the eggs that way, Connie? They're surprisingly edible, Mrs. Davis. You were telling me about your date last night. What happened after Mr. Boynton took you to the park? Well, first we took a nice, long, bashful walk around the zoo. <laughs> then we sat down on Mr. Boynton's favorite bench. You'd be surprised how cooling and refreshing it was just to sit there. Refreshing? Yes, it's right outside the polar bear's cage. <laughs> beautiful night. Mr. Boynton looked up at the full moon. Then he sighed, his lips parted. And then? He sneezed. <laughs> and was that all, Connie? Certainly not, Mrs. Davis. I looked right into his eyes and softly murmured, Gesundheit. <laughs> then he took me home. Why, I'm surprised at you, Connie, missing a big opportunity like that. What do you mean, Mrs. Davis? You said Mr. Boynton sneezed. Yes. A man's sneeze is very important, Connie. It isn't something that you can dismiss lightly. What should I have done? Painted a picture of it? <laughs> Men are like children, Connie. They like people to make a fuss over them when they don't feel well. As soon as Mr. Boynton sneezed, you should have treated him for a bad cold. Treated him? But how? You should have least have made him a cup of hot tea. I would have, but the polar bears were using the kettle. <laughs> you forget, Mrs. Davis, we were in the park. Then you should have left the park. Don't you see, Connie, every man likes to know that his well-being is a matter of vital importance to his woman. But, Mrs. Davis, I am not, if you'll excuse the expression, and I certainly will, his woman. <laughs> Well, you never will be unless you take advantage of his natural male weaknesses. Remember now, Connie, the next time Mr. Boynton shows the slightest sign of ill health, you've got to be a real Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale? But I haven't got the voice for it. I mean... <laughs> I appreciate your interest, Mrs. Davis, but if I have to wait until Mr. Boynton gets sick before he romances me, I'll be too old to enjoy it. He's as healthy as an ox. <laughs> So much the better. It's those great, big, healthy ones who appreciate you most when something does go wrong. Oh, that must be Walter Denton. He's given me a lift to school this morning. Come in, Walter. I left the latch off for him. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hi, Mrs. Davis. Would you like something to eat, Walter? Or have you had breakfast? Yes, thanks. Yes, thanks. What? He's had breakfast, and he'd like something to eat. <laughs> got something in the kitchen that you'll just love, Walter. One of my latest recipes. On second thought, I'm not very hungry right now. You don't have to be hungry to eat these. A friend of mine sent me the recipe all the way from Florida. They're called Pensacola Popovers. Oh, gee, I don't know, Mrs. Davis. I... I'll warm them up a bit and bring in enough for all of us. Coffee is right on the table, Connie. All right, Mrs. Davis. She certainly gets some weird dishes together sometimes. Yeah, but you can't really blame her. Everybody's got some kind of a hobby. George Washington liked to go hunting. Benjamin Franklin played with a kite. Thomas Edison read short stories. 
Then there was Lucretia Borgia. <laughs> you know, in a way, I can't help feeling grateful to Mrs. Davis. It was one of her cookies that brought true love into my life. And how long have you been in love with this cookie, Walter? <laughs> and I'm talking about Harriet Conklin, Miss Brooks. It all started when we first began going together. We dropped by to see you after school one day and you weren't in. And that's when Mrs. Davis gave me the cookie. 20 minutes later, I was sick as a dog. <laughs> Must have been one of her quick acting cookies. <laughs> that's when Harriet first nursed me back to health. Gee, prior to that day, I never enjoyed being sick in my life. You enjoyed it? Definitely. In fact, ever since then, I'm sick four or five times a month. Of course, it doesn't always work out. Uh, take yesterday, for instance. I had a date with Harriet for the evening, and all day long I felt great, because when I woke up in the morning, I was feeling rotten. But by the time I ate dinner, I felt fine again. Boy, was I disappointed. <laughs> what you're driving at, by way of the Malayan Peninsula, is that it's nice to have someone you like take care of you. Hmm? Oh, it's more than nice, Miss Brooks. It's, it's blissful. Why, when Harriet puts her little white hand on my fevered brow, she reminds me of... Florence Nightingale? No, Mercedes McMillan. <laughs> As she was a trained nurse who took care of my mother once when I was a little boy. Oh. Who's this Florence Nightingale? She was in the same racket. <laughs> she was a famous nurse, too. Look, Walter, I'd like to ask you something. Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. What is it? Do you think a man like Mr. Boynton would enjoy being nursed back to health if he became ill? Oh, sure he would. But there isn't much chance of his becoming ill. He's got nerves of steel, and his stomach is made of iron. Must be pretty rough on his shirts. <laughs> but you know, I've been thinking... Here we are, folks. Pensacola popovers, hot off the griddle. But those are the same kind of cookies I ate that other time when I... Ugh, no. <laughs> no, thanks, Mrs. Davis. I'll just have some milk, thanks. What are they made of, Mrs. Davis? There's nothing extraordinary about the batter, Connie. I just take a plain whole wheat waffle mix, add some sour cream, yeast, a few raisins, and some cucumber rind, then beat it until the caraway seeds are dissolved. <laughs> you can do for them. <laughs> Mrs. Davis, would you put some of those in a couple of bags for me? I'd like to take them to school. To school, Connie? Yes. Mr. Boynton may have an iron stomach, but I think these cookies might rust it a little. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Boynton. May I come in? Of course, Miss Brooks. Here, let me help you with those packages. Oh, just set them on this table here. Ah, what brings you to school so early this morning? The usual thing, Walter Denton. Actually, I had to stop at the grocer's. I brought a few things along for you, too. Thought you might want a bite before we have lunch. Oh, uh, I can't have lunch with you today. I've been invited to the biology club banquet. It's a stag, I'm afraid. Well, don't be afraid. It might be fun. <laughs> Have a banana, Mr. Boynton? Banana? I don't mind if I do. I haven't had anything to eat since breakfast. And it's almost 8 o'clock already. <laughs> you must be starved. Here, I brought some milk along, too. Well, thanks, Miss Brooks. It's only a pint bottle, but if you're still thirsty, there's some buttermilk right next to it. Uh, buttermilk? Yes, but I don't advise you to drink it right after the sweet milk. No? No, eat this chocolate eclair first. <laughs> I guess you've heard about my appetite. Honestly, my constitution is so rugged, I can eat nails. They're in that little bag over there. <laughs> uh, that is, why don't you try some of these nice green plums? <laughs> oh, don't mind if I do. Mr. Boynton? Uh, yes, Miss Brooks? How do you feel? Fine. No spots in front of your eyes or anything? Certainly not. I've never been sick a day in my life. I know, but everybody gets a little dizzy or something once in a while. Aren't you a little dizzy? What is all this, Miss Brooks? Why this sudden solicitude concerning my health? Oh, it's nothing, really. Must be my nursing background. I studied to be a trained nurse, you know. No, I didn't know that. What made you take up teaching instead? Just money mad, I guess. <laughs> I kept hearing about school teachers winning the Irish sweepstakes. <laughs> well, I'd better be getting into my classroom now. Goodbye, Mr. Boynton. Bye, Miss Brooks. 
Still no spots or anything? Of course not. I feel great. Guess I'd better whip out the popovers. Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Boynton. Here's another surprise for you. Some homemade Pensacola popovers. Oh, but Miss Brooks, a whole bag full. You don't get the flavor until you've eaten several of them. <laughs> well, it certainly was nice of you to bring me this snack. Mmm, this cheeseburger is out of this world. Well, be sure and give me a ring before you join it. <laughs> Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. For bare skin beauty, it's bath size palm olive with its famous beauty lather. Yes, bath size palm olive for loveliness all over. There's something thrillingly new in this wonderful beauty lather of bath size palm olive soap. New fragrance, new charm, new allure. See if palm olive in your daily tub or shower doesn't leave your shoulders, arms, and back, yes, all of you softer and smoother. Completely lovelier all over. You'll thrill to the tender whisper of perfume it leaves on your skin. A whisper that says, come hither to romance. And this new bath size palm olive is so big, so thrifty, economical to use because it lasts so long and gives so much soft, lovely lather so fast. That soft, lovely lather with its alluring new fragrance is palm olive soaps alone. Palm olive's famous beauty lather. Yes, a new fragrance, new charm, new allure that can make every woman a vision of delight in the new revealing fashions that show so much more of you. So remember, for bare skin beauty, it's bath size palm olive with its famous beauty lather. Yes, bath size palm olive for loveliness all over. Get bath size palm olive soap tomorrow. Men folk love it too. <laughs> During my morning classes, I gave my students brief study periods and left the room three times for the following reasons. At 9.15, I stepped out for a hot dog and a bag of caramels, which I promptly delivered to Mr. Boynton. At 10.45, he gracefully accepted two cream puffs and a Loganberry popsicle. <laughs> At 11.30, I brought him a taffy apple on a stick, some French pastry, and a pineapple malted. Shortly before 12 noon, I entered the biology laboratory to claim the body. <laughs> oh, hi, Miss Brooks. Say, do you have any more of those cookies? I just happened to have another bag of them with me. I brought them along in case you were still standing. A uh, hungry. <laughs> Here, take one. Uh, I'll take two if you don't mind. You know how those banquets are. Probably won't serve for hours yet. You know, it's funny how people acquire different eating habits. Some people like to eat three square meals a day. Me, I, I like to pick. Of course, so far today, I, I guess you'd say I did more than pick. I'd say you picked and shoveled. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the trouble with most people is their eyes are bigger than their stomachs. Why, any insurance company will tell you how dangerous it is to become overweight. And it's almost impossible to avoid getting too heavy if you don't cut down on your food intake as you get older. What's in that other bag? <laughs> it's a turkey sandwich, Mr. Boynton Here, take it Oh, now, just a minute Accepting a few, li a few little snacks is one thing But this looks like a pretty expensive sandwich uh, How much was it, Miss Brooks? Oh, forget it, Mr. Boynton No, no, I, I won't How much did this turkey sandwich cost you? I, I got it for nothing Where? A rich uncle died and left it to me <laughs> Now, take it, Mr. Boynton It's yours No, Miss Brooks Not until you tell me how much it cost All right It cost 45 cents Oh, well, thanks a lot. <laughs> but I'd like to see you. Oh, I didn't know you were here, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Conklin. How are you, sir? I was just saying goodbye to Mr. Boynton. He's going to a banquet in a little while. Oh, oh. Well, what are all these paper bags doing here? He's been rehearsing. <laughs> Would you like a piece of this turkey sandwich, Mr. Conklin? No, no, thank you. I've had my lunch. Well, how about one of these cookies? They're very good. Oh. Thanks, Boynton. I'll take it with me. You can't take it with you. <laughs> I mean, take a couple of them, Mr. Conklin. Oh, thanks. The reason I dropped in, Boynton, was to caution you about locking all your cages before leaving school. I wouldn't want any of our students to be bitten by one of your experimental animals. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, Mr. Conklin. My animals are all harmless. Well, even if they did nip someone, there'd be no trouble securing first aid. Not with Miss Brooks around. 
Miss Brooks? Well, yes, yeah, she studied to be a trained nurse, you know, before she took up teaching. Really? Really? <laughs> then the nursing profession's loss is Madison High School's loss. <laughs> <laughs> If you ever get a splinter in your finger, Mr. Conklin, be sure to call me. I'll be glad to hack it out. <laughs> but before you go, Mr. Conklin, why don't you help yourself to another one of these cookies? Oh, very well, Miss Brooks. Uh, uh, be sure and lock those cages, Boynton. Oh, yes, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Conklin. What's that, Mr. Boynton? Oh, it's McDougal. <laughs> yes, he, he's eating one of those cookies. I gave it to him a little while ago. Oh, look at him, Miss Brooks. Look how methodically he's eating. That shows how intelligent he is. It's smart to eat slowly, you know. It's smart to eat those cookies slowly. <laughs> Look, he just finished it. Oh, did you enjoy it, Mac? <laughs> oh, look at him. He's trying to stand on his head. <laughs> hey, he's hopping all over the cage. Do you think he's looking for another cookie? I think he's looking for a nice pool of Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> you, know, you never know what Mac's gonna do sometimes. He's pretty peculiar. Well, I guess I'll take him to my apartment now and get over to that banquet. Your apartment? Well, yes. I don't like to leave Mac alone overnight in the lab here. He gets rather lonesome. As a matter of fact, we're good company for each other. Mac and I have some pretty gay times in our little bachelor apartment. I'll bet the joint really jumps. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll have to be running along now, Miss Brooks. Thanks for everything. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Boynton. Don't forget the rest of the popovers. Oh, thanks a lot, Miss Brooks. I'm sorry I can't take you with me, but I'll give you a call tonight. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Boynton. Well, here I am, queen of the lab again, in the center of every beady eye. Fourteen guinea pigs and twelve white mice. Any of you fellas want to go to lunch? Come in. Oh, Miss Brooks, thank goodness I found you. Hello, Harriet. What's all the excitement? It's Daddy. He wants to see you in his office immediately. Mr. Conklin? But I saw him just a few... Oh, I'm worried about him, Miss Brooks. Terribly worried. He just had to double up on his couch. That's nothing to worry about. Things are crowded all over. This is serious, Miss Brooks. Daddy told me you've had training as a nurse. Oh, please come into his office right away. All right, Harriet, but I'd give two weeks' salary if Mercedes McMillan were here. Mercedes McMillan? She was the Florence Nightingale of Walter Denton's mother. <laughs> I'm glad you got here, Miss Brooks. How's Mr. Conklin feeling, Walter? Oh, why do I have to... <laughs> Does that answer your question? Here's Miss Brooks, Mr. Conklin. Tell me, Miss Brooks, just what was in that cookie I ate. If I told you, you'd feel worse. <laughs> I'd better get out of here. At a time like this, a man should be surrounded by the people who care for him most. But I'm here, Mr. Conklin. So am I, Mr. Conklin. That's what I say. I'm going home. Here, Daddy, here's a nice glass of water. Uh, no, no, not now, Harriet. I'm going home to your mother. She'll know what to do for me. Miss Brooks, please lock up the office before you leave. Yes, sir. Don't you worry about a thing, Mr. Conklin. We'll take care of everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing seriously wrong with Daddy. Oh, I'm sure there isn't, Harriet. It's just... I'll get it. Hello? Principal's office. Gives me a feeling of power. <laughs> Miss Brooks speaking. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. This is Mr. Boynton. Could you get over to my place right away? Your place? Yes. I wouldn't ask this of you if it weren't a question of illness. Illness? I'll be right over. Play? Yeah. Who was that? It was Mr. Boynton. He sounded very upset. Now's your chance, Miss Brooks. It's up to you to nurse him back to health. Walter, what are you talking about? Well, don't you see? Miss Brooks can take care of Mr. Boynton just like you take care of me when I'm sick. Now, the first thing you gotta do, Miss Brooks, is stop at a hospital supply store for a thermometer, a first aid kit. Oh, but Walter, oh, please I... don't interrupt, Miss Brooks. You've gotta do this thing right. If I were you, I'd even get a complete nurse's outfit. Don't you think so, Harriet? Absolutely, Miss Brooks. He'll just eat it up. Why should that be an exception? <laughs> There you are, Mac. Just rest on this pillow a while. That's all right. You'll feel better when Miss Brooks gets here. Oh, I, I hate to leave you while you're feeling like this, but I've got to go to that luncheon. 
come right in, Miss Brooks. Oh, thank heaven I'm not too late. It is quite serious, I'm afraid, but... Oh, Miss Brooks, you've got on a nurse's uniform. No talking, Mr. Boynton. You mustn't exert yourself. Now, take this thermometer. Just breathe normally. Thermometer? But uh, no, no, just a minute, Miss Brooks. Keep I... it in your mouth, please. Well, well, what do I want with a thermometer? Mm, your pulse is very rapid. Ought to be checked regularly for long periods. Why, I might have to sit here holding your hand like this for months. <laughs> <laughs> Or at least until your pulse is back to normal. Of course, by that time, mine will be completely out of control. <laughs> you, you haven't given me a chance to explain, Miss Brooks. I'm not the patient. You're, you're not the patient, Mr. Boynton? No, Miss Brooks. In fact, I've got to hurry right over to that lunch, and I'm late now. But, Mr. Boynton, I've got quite an investment in this little occasion. That is, if you're not the patient, who is? It's McDougal. McDougal? <laughs> You can say that again, Mac. In fact, we can both say it. Boom. It's just something he ate, Miss Brooks, but I feel, I feel much better now that you're here to sit with him. Me? Look, Mr. Boynton, my folks didn't raise me to be a frog sitter. And if you... Oh, gosh, look at the time. I've really got to run. Mr. Boynton, I'll only I be a few hours, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, and thanks a lot. Oh, great. Well, I've got the nurse's uniform on. This is as good a time as any to cut my throat. <laughs> Don't get up, Mac. I'll answer it. <laughs> oh, hello, Harriet. Come in. Hello, Miss Brooks. Walter's parking the car. He'll be along in a minute. That nurse's outfit looks simply super. How's the patient? The patient? Oh, he's resting comfortably. Fine. Under a hunk of lettuce. <laughs> a hunk of lettuce? Come with me, Harriet. He's sitting on a pillow by the window. But, Miss Brooks, I don't see Mr. Boynton. Without telescopic vision, I didn't expect you to. He's still at the luncheon. Then who are you nursing? At the sound of the gulp, it will be exactly my patient. <laughs> McDougal? Who else? When Mac fell victim to the popover plague, Mr. Boynton drafted me to sit with him. But how can you sit with a frog? I use an underslung school, s stool. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Harriet. Oh, it's you, Walter. How's everything working out, Miss Brooks? Are you making a big fuss over him? Big enough. I've rearranged his pillow for him three times. Well, and tell me, Miss Brooks, when you bent down to fix his pillow, did he put his arms around you? He certainly did, all four of them. You <laughs> what? Just follow me, Walter. Harriet's over there by the window. Good, I've got a date to get sick with her later on. Hi, Harriet. Hello, Walter. Isn't it terrible? Mr. Boynton isn't sick at all. It's McDougal. McDougal? Yes, he's fallen asleep now, and I'd appreciate it if you don't wake him up. I've had my hands full with him for an hour. Why, he's hot. You make the explanations, Harriet. I'll answer the door, hmm? Hello, Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin, come in. How do you feel? I forgot about my own indisposition as soon as I heard of Mr. Boynton's illness. When I think of how hard it is to get a good summer school teacher, my heart goes out to the poor fellow. How typical of you, Mr. Conklin. Uh, may I, for just a moment, go in and pay my respects to the patient? Well, right now, he's unconscious. Unconscious, Miss Brooks? Yes, but I'm sure he'll be croaking any minute. <laughs> croaking? Just follow me, Mr. Conklin. Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Daddy, did Miss Brooks tell you? Not yet, Harriet. Walter, Mr. Conklin wants to see the patient. Uh, where did you put him? I thought he'd sleep better in the closet, Miss Brooks. <laughs> in the closet? But he's a sick man. How can you now put listen, him in? listen, Daddy. Uh, step aside. I've got to get him out of there. Now, don't you worry, Mr. Boynton. I'm here to see that you get everything. Uh, you... Uh, uh, Mr. Boynton! <laughs> Miss Brooks, what's the meaning of this? This man is a frog! <laughs> It's McDougal, Mr. Conklin. You brief him, Harriet. I've got to answer the phone. Hello? Well, hello, Miss Brooks. This is Mr. Boynton. Mr. Boynton, I've been expecting you home. Where are you? I'm in the hospital, Miss Brooks. The hospital? Yes, and I'm not quite clear on how it happened. There I was at the luncheon when suddenly, without any apparent reason, my eyes closed and I slid off my chair to the floor. <laughs> Well, what do you know? A delayed popover. <laughs> Let me 
ask you the silliest question of the month. Did you eat anything? Well, as a matter of fact, I did. After I had the regular lunch, Miss Brooks, the fellow next to me remarked that he wasn't hungry, so I sort of helped him out with his lunch, just to be sociable. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. I suppose you already have a nurse taking care of you. Yes, there, there are several nurses here, but, well, something's lacking. They're strangers, Miss Brooks, and at a time like this, a man should have around him only those he's genuinely fond of. That's why I was wondering if, if you'd do me a favor. A favor? What is it? Would you send McDougal right over here? <laughs> Mr. Boynton, I'll be only too happy to send McDougal over. Just tell me one thing. What's that, Miss Brooks? How do you want him, boiled or fried? <laughs> Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid... Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream Beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after a few hours in the hospital, Mr. Boynton returned home. Immediately following a very touching reunion with McDougal, he turned to me. I can't tell you how grateful I am for all you've done, Miss Brooks. Well, try. <laughs> Sitting here with Mac for me and being so concerned over my welfare, well, you've just been wonderful, Miss Brooks. Maybe now you'll realize, Mr. Boynton, that I'm kind of handy to have around. I haven't had a chance to prove it yet, but believe me, Mr. Boynton, the next time you eat yourself into a coma, I can take just as good care of you as any doctor. Of course, my rates will be slightly different from the doctor's. Different? Yes, I can only afford to pay you about a dollar a visit. Next week, we have another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. At last, a good tasting way to help prevent tooth decay. That's new Colgate ammoniated tooth powder created in Colgate's research laboratories. Contains the revolutionary dental discovery that helps prevent new cavities. Plus, Colgate's exclusive foamy cleaning action and a refreshing minty flavor you'll enjoy. Get Colgate ammoniated tooth powder today. Economical four ounce size, only 43 cents. <laughs> This week is National Farm Safety Week. Its purpose is to remind every member of every American farm family to think of safety first to make farm life a safer, happier, more prosperous way of life. Every day, 51 farm residents are killed by accidents. Every hour, four of farm buildings are destroyed by fire. So take extra precaution. Put a stop to this needless injury and waste. Use farm machinery and deal with farm animals with caution. Cultivate safety and harvest happiness. Remember, safety is always in season. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>